Sons of Anarchy Season 6 Episode 1 Now, for those who don't know Sons of Anarchy is my favorite show It's been my favorite show for years Y'all don't know how stoked I am about this season I've been waiting for this season for months And for those who don't know about SOA Go watch the show from Season 1, Episode 1 it's a phenomenal show. I don't care what anybody says. It's arguably the one of the best ever created. Now, for those who are caught up to date, yeah. For those who haven't seen this episode, go watch it. This opening right here, best of a, the best they've ever had on SOA. Hands down. Hands down. It was so jam-packed. Man, let's begin with the beginning of this episode right <laughs> I love how it started with the um the intelligent you know I love how it started with Jack's writing out his advice to his sons it shows once again that he's not just a thug he's not just a mindless killer or anything like that he's actually a modern outlaw and he's a thinker he's writing out his advice to his sons and saying you know i can't tell you how to live your life you got to make choices but the advice that he gave you know to be a man and and he questions also the qualities of him as a leader i really really thoroughly enjoyed that i thoroughly enjoyed that because it, it shows once again the complexity within the mindset of the different characters in the show and then we see after that the scene, and I, and I thought it was, I thought it was very touching. Night, very proper way to start off the season with the whole family thing. There, you know, you have Jax, and you see the two boys, Abel and Thomas. Then you see, you know, Gemma. I'll get to Gemma in a minute. But then we also see Happy. And I had forgot Happy was a sergeant in arms. So I congratulate Jax for that because Happy is one of the most trill dudes on the show, hands down. Happy is that dude that ready to roll, man. But he, he also thinks as well, okay? So, Gemma now. Now, Gemma. Still shady. Still shady as can be. I have not felt empathy for this character for two seasons now, okay? She continually says things and make choices, makes choices that could potentially hurt the club and especially her own son okay and i ain't vibing with that i'm not vibing with that at all Jax, for those who don't know is my favorite character for many reasons not just because he's the main not just because he's the you know main protagonist but because i really relate to his character for the most part and then moving on we see we see some good stuff you know we see some updates with nero being an og once again taking the leadership role of his crew um, let's see. We see Clay. Now, I gotta get on Clay. I've been saying for a while now that Clay should have been dead for two seasons now. Two seasons. Okay? He should have been dead back in season four. Jack should have been allowed to kill him, but you know, it is what it is. But at least by season five, he should have been off. But no. Bobby had to stop him. Bobby. So, what I'm hoping for, you know, might not come actually. Because you see in this episode that it's hinted at that Clay might survive in prison. Because he's, you know, he's trying to stay alive. I ain't going to spoil it for those who haven't seen it. But he's trying to stay alive and it's like, oh. So, I'm still hoping that somehow he dies in prison this season. I'm, I'm holding out hope. I'm holding out hope. Now, as far as in Bobby goes, I really like what they did with his character. Um, wasn't even thinking about it. I, I, for one, I was thoroughly, thoroughly glad that Bobby quit from being VP last season because his, his, some of his advice to Jax, it it didn't fit with the time. It was like Tom Hagen at the time that um Michael Corleone switched to uh, Vito Corleone, okay. Before he switched back to Tom Hagen, his advice just wasn't vibing with the circumstances at the time. Okay, so I'm really loving. I really love, and especially in this episode, it showed once again why I love Chips. Why I love Chips being the VP. He's always been in Jax's corner, 
and he gives that advice, but he, he's willing to do what got to be done, period, okay? He don't play that. That scene with Juice, excellent, excellently done. And so, Bobby, I'm, I'm loving what they're doing with Bobby. You know, Bobby's looking to potentially leave the club. Now, that ain't much of a spoiler for those who kind of saw it coming. Bobby no longer really fits in Sam Crow. So, we'll see where that goes. I, 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 like, I like that avenue. And also, you know, um, let's see. Juice, Juice is back. And I, I didn't even realize he had left. I must have forgot from last season. But anyway, that's, that's a small thing. But um, we see Tig. Now, Tig, yo, he's still a psycho. But I actually like his, his psycho nature um, in this episode because of the situation that they put him in. Now, I really like the, how they reflected back to his whole thing with his daughter from last season. I really like that. Like, you, if you understood, you understood his mindset. So I really like that. I appreciated that. And it was was understandable for psycho nature in this in this situation so i applaud i applaud us away for doing that for for tig though but as far as in with tig we see that um the successor with pope now he he said he lets jacks know that uh clay's under certain situation and uh he's protected not gonna say how but he's protected and they can't touch him as of yet and Jax is like Clay gonna do everything he can to stay alive, okay? So, Clay, you know, it's gonna be interesting to see where that development goes this season. But uh, we also see that, uh, you know, is, is Clay gonna be a serious threat to Sam Crow? We don't know yet. You know, Redwood, Redwood's already taking a lot of hits. We'll see where that goes. Um, but like I say, also, Pope's successors, like, you know, we, we got to, uh, pretty much, uh, how, how do I say this, give closure to Pope's family and friends, they still kind of want Tig's head, okay, and Jax, we, this saying, this not gonna put Jax in a good situation, it's not gonna put Jax in a good situation, and he's like, Jax is like, yo, my club's already taking enough hits, I can't keep taking hits, and Pope's success is like, that's not my problem. Jax is like, I know. Okay. Okay. I see how this is going to go. Now, Gemma, another thing I have to hit on with Gemma. I did not like, now, I like the lawyer that, uh, that Sam Crow, you know, representing uh, Tara and all that. Sam Crow's lawyer, the female. I did not like Gemma. Gemma pissed me off this episode when she did that. When she did that with the lawyer. So, I was not very happy with that. Not at all. Um... So we'll we'll see how that develops. Threatening everything. I, I don't like that, Gemma. Gemma. Mm, she 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 might have to go for me too. I, I I'll get the axe. Fine with me. And anymore. Oh, oh, I really I really gotta hit on um the business that was I love I love the um the the concentration on business now. Now because you know, it's not. This is this is makes the show more realistic. Obviously, there's some fictionalized elements of blah 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 dramatization, but the whole business aspect. You know, the fact that they have to respect certain territories brings again, um, real life thing. In an ex dirty cop. Hey, that that's reality. That's reality, ladies and gentlemen. If you want to believe it or not, but I, I like that element. You know, and also like. Jack's making moves shows how great a leader you know he when he sees opportunity he goes out and gets it you know he goes out to get it so I really appreciate that and I'm really interested to see um the relationship how that's going to develop with uh Jax and his new female business partner we'll see how that goes um any anybody else besides I get to one last point I think uh, the only other real point that I gotta get to. Oh, and it's oh, it's nice back to see uh, Wayne Hunter again. Nice, nice always to see him. You know, <laughs> um, Nero's kid. That was cool. Two points. Two points left. Um, the first one is with Tara. Now Tara, yo, I've had an off and on kind of liking, somewhat disliking Tara and whatnot, but. After this episode, y'all watch this episode. How can you not love Tara? She was, especially that last scene she was in, she was a G dog. 
she was so trill. You can't tell me she's not a trill character. And then with the with the long hair, and she don't want her man. Oh, Tara, Tara, you did you Tara to me is the best character in this episode. Definitely Tara get Tara for the win. Another point that I, I gotta add in this one, I feel so bad for Otto. I ain't gonna lie. I was am by him last season. But after what he did, okay. I feel so bad for Otto has consistently bitten be get that consistently been getting screwed over pretty much this whole series. And I have to also highlight, you know, I, I feel bad for him, but you know that again that shows the reality of the situation that Sam Crow as well as he is in. But I gotta hit back to Chibs and the VP status. Now I've been saying this. Besides OP, I couldn't see a better VP choice, vice president choice that Jax could have chosen. Bobby, I understand why he did it, but Bobby, like again, I said, Bobby too old. You know, he's got his his alliances are questionable where he lies. It wasn't about the club so much as it was about protect. How do you protect? How do you protect Clay for all that he's done? You got to pay the piper. That's why I'm gonna be pissed off if they don't. They got to I. They got to off. They got to off. They got ice clay. Because you got to pay the pepper. You got to pay for what you've done. You got to pay for your terrible choices, okay? And last but not leastly, though the way the way they did this with that kid throughout the episode. Now, I, I'm pretty sure it was more symbolic. But the fact, this is why I love SOA. They deal with the real life, real world issues. The whole thing about that kid, the notebook. Y'all saw the notebook. The, the kid, he come to backpack. And I had seen stuff before, you know, because I was Googling it. I, I didn't happen to catch it on FX. But I saw the things. They talk about school tracks. This dude, he ain't bringing a pistol. This dude bringing about a tech. He bring out a tech nine. And Uzi, ladies and gentlemen. That dude coming out some Grand Theft Auto status. I'm like, dude. When I saw that, I'm like, y'all saw him bring out? Dude. Then he come in, shoot up a classroom. That, that, was, that, was, a, that was a phenomenal addition tragic but it was a phenomenal addition to the episode you know it brought the weight it's not just about the club but there's a lot that's going on you know and i have to also mention y'all you know before that you see him all oh, the x's you know he's a cutter it dealt in that one scene alone it dealt with so many things man that added great depth to this episode great depth anything i think that i think that's that's it you know, I covered all the basics of this episode. And overall, overall, um, I got to give this 10 out of 10. It's a perfect episode, especially for an opener. Okay, th this was a perfect episode of Sons of Anarchy. You couldn't have asked for much more. The fact, you know, it was it was a fluid, it was fluid story progression. It was great story progression, to be honest with you. Um, it picked up right where we left off so not a bunch of skip which i was hoping you know i i was hope i was wondering how they were going to handle this so they didn't skip a lot in this situation it worked perfectly because there was a lot of loose ends and stuff we we want to see um it highlighted a lot of characters a lot of it introduced some some more characters you know some things that interested and one last thing i have to uh one last thing i have to say about one character that Ex FBI dude whose sister got killed. Now, with him though, with him though, is a very interesting because I knew there was something a little bit off by him. Not just his whole system. We see, yo, this episode, the dude's juicing. He's using H. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, go watch the episode. So I thought that that right there was another besides the the, the school incident, school shooting, and besides, you know, that right there, again. You know, applause. And yeah, adding Wendy. There were so many elements that they th put together excellently, intricately put together. You know, Wendy and everything. There were so many elements that um, it, it was just done perfectly. It was done perfectly. You, you can't ask for a much better season opening than what we got here in this episode. And I expected one to like, comment, subscribe. Tell me y'all thought, yes, I will be reviewing the whole season of SO, this whole season of SOA and probably seasons more if they uh, continue, which I'm hoping because I love this show so much. And y'all have a beautiful day, beautiful night. Peace.